Hey, what's going on guys, Arava here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2018 mod career mode here with Fernando Alonso in his McLaren Renault for the 2018 season. We're here for round number three at the Chinese Grand Prix. If you guys did miss episode number two, though, at the Bahrain Grand Prix, be sure to go check that one out before you see this one uploaded just about a week ago. A really great episode there. Obviously, we had a decent, decent result. Good strategy. I think it will be slightly harder to pull something like that off here at China, but we'll see. Um, we'll, first of all, we'll have to get into qualifying, but before we get to that, guys, just a huge thank you to you guys on the support in the series so far. You guys have really smashed episode number one and you did the same thing pretty much for episode number two. So keep smashing that like button, guys, if you're looking forward to this series more and more. Obviously, it's a weekly series, so be sure to turn the notifications so you never miss an upload in general on every single on every single video because YouTube's been a little bit iffy as of late, but especially on the weekends when we're uploading this one episode every single weekend there or thereabouts. But let's get into the starting grid then and then we'll get into the Chinese Grand Prix race. Right, let's take a look then at the starting grid for the 2018 Chinese Grand Prix, round number three of this season. And it's going to be three after three pole positions for this man, Lewis Hamilton, who once again is on the front row of the grid. Yet to convert a pole position to a race window in the opening two rounds. Let's see if it's going to be third time lucky for the Brits. But alongside him is not his teammate Valtteri Bottas. It's indeed Sebastian Vettel there in the Ferrari. His teammate Kimi Raikkonen in third place and with Bottas down in fourth after a mistake on the Saturday. And Vettel doing well to wrestle that red car up and the front row. Third row is all Red Bull cars, then Daniel Ricciardo, Max Verstappen, unable to match the Ferrari or Mercedes guys, especially down that back straight, but too fast for the midfield guys, who's spearheaded by myself as Fernando Alonso in seventh place there on the fourth row, alongside Nico Hulkmerk, doing well to get his Renault ahead of both Haas cars. Speaking of Haas, Romain Grosjean, ninth place there, just ahead of Stoffel Van Dorn, who once again managed him to find himself in tenth place, the last of the top ten runners there, and is the last person to not have a free choice of tyres going to what is a dry grind. Grand Prix at the start at least. Kevin Magnussen 11th place, Carlos Sainz again in 12th place, disappointed not to match his teammate Nico Hülkenberg. On the next row, this time not all Force India, Sergio Perez alongside Pierre Gasly, who's done a fantastic job to get that Toro Rosso Honda car into 14th place, and Brendan Hartley too to also split the two Force India cars with those two Toro Rosso. So those two doing really well and trying to challenge Force India if they can. Charles Leclerc in 17th place ahead of his teammate Marcus Ericsson, but it's all rows there for Sauber. And then in the last row, is all the Williams, Sergei Sorokin and Lance Stroll still really struggling for any kind of pace in a straight line or downforce wise. But that is the starting grid for the Chinese Grand Prix. Let's get into the race. So P7 in qualifying, so slap bang, best of the rest. So pretty damn good job in qualifying there, uh, ringing the neck of the McLaren on a Saturday. But for Sunday, you can see in terms of the race strategy, then uh, looking at this screen, no rain to come, thankfully, just kind of cloudy the entire race. So we're going to be on a two stop. For now, the default says two sets of super soft tires and then one set of soft, like we did last time out at Bahrain. We're going to swap it around a tad. Of course, we have to start on the tires we uh, qualified on, the super softs, but we're going to switch round the other two stints and we're going to go to the soft tires first try and stretch that out and then be on lower fuel hopefully a bit lighter nimble on our feet and try and fight back if we can on the super soft tires because there may be a chance some people try a one stop with the medium tires it definitely is possible but i just don't know how fast it is really so we'll just have to kind of cross that bridge when we get to it here but let's try and make the most of what is a very solid qualifying position here p7 let's go to five red lights then for the chinese grand prix round number three of the 2018 season as lights are out we're underway it's a sluggish start there from Valtteri Bottas. They're a really bad start for him as Ricardo waltzes away. Verstappen's had a pretty poor start as well. We're going to try and send it around the outside of the fin if we can, getting oh so close to the track on the left, the white lines. We try and find some room around the outside of Ricardo. It doesn't work out, and instead, we're focused on defending from Valtteri Bottas to keep that P5 we're up in now. And so two places gained to start this race. We're a little bit wobbly on the exit, but uh, two places gained. So very, very sort of solid start to this race, and pretty much in stark contrast to the Bahrain Grand Prix. Meanwhile, it's a, it's a kind of a good start for my teammate as well, Van Dorn. Not an initial good getaway, but looks like he just made a, or trying to make a two two man overtake there. He's already overtaken the Haas and now just can't get uh, get by the, the Renault car there of Nika Hulkenberg. I think that is as uh, Carlos Sainz is the one in the background there. And then speaking about the Haas, the Haas of, I think that's uh, Kevin Magnussen going side by side then with one of the four senior cars of Sergio Perez then side by side through the long right hand of Ben. The bend onto the main back straight and it's going to be a straight drag race there 
there. You can see so far, though, Lewis Hamilton all well and away and calm in his world in first place. Then followed by the two Ferraris. Then you've got Dan Ricciardo, myself. You can see Max Verstappen being hounded by Valtteri Bottas and Bottas down the inside of Verstappen. Meanwhile, in the background, even further down the road is the two Force India side by side down the inside. Both of them on Kevin Magnussen. So Magnussen might lose two, three positions. The Toro Rosso is onto there of Pierre Gasly. And uh, one of them at Force Indies is through, not the other one. Magnussen manages to defend, but you've got Pierre Gasly now side by side with Sergio Perez, I believe, on the right hand side there. And Gasly still trying to pull through, and he has done into the break zone round the outside, and he pulls it off into turn one. That's a fantastic move there from a young Frenchman in the Toro Rosso Honda doing some work there to, you know, that both Toro Rossos really did a great job in qualifying, but uh, Gasly, in particular, at the start of this race, doing a great job to try and even battle for some uh, tiny points at the bottom end of the top 10. Meanwhile, this is my teammate Van Dorn in a sandwich here between Nico Hulkenberg and the other Haas of Roman Grosjean there. Now on board, though, with Raikkonen at the end of lap two into the last corner. Vettel with a bad mistake there in P2, and so Raikkonen in P3 might have a really good run on his teammate. There is Hamilton off your screen. Uh, all is calm in his world in first place, but uh, Vettel now being hounded by both Raikkonen and Daniel Ricciardo into turn one. Raikkonen makes some contact with Vettel, and the Ferraris half round more contacts made with the Ricciardo than it's a big amount of ping pong there for Kimi Raikkonen, ironically, and not Sebastian Vettel in the end. Ricciardo definitely looks like he's got, he's got some damage off. I think that might have been some carbon fiber off Kimi Raikkonen. Either way, Raikkonen now uh, fighting Bottas behind us, and we have a good opportunity to maybe chase down Ricciardo and make a pound. You can see in the break zone, we close up so much, so I definitely think Ricciardo has some sort of damage here, but either way, we're still already up into P4, but it could be even more. It could be P3. We could be on for a podium position right now early on in this race. If we can try and make this overtake on Ricciardo, you can see in the S section here on the long right hander, clearly I've got enough grip to try and make a move, but I just don't want to be too hasty here, so we're being a little bit patient, and I think we're going to have to wait until the main back straight with the DRS for the first time in this race to make the pass, but I think Ricardo, you can see in this break zone, clearly, I think he's got some issues now after that contact there. He's just not going as fast as he could do into that corner and so we try and wind up you can see the amount of dirty air I get though off the back of his car there taking a really wide line but now we cut back in onto the racing line right up it behind his car and then swoop to the right and DRS is going to be eventually open you can see actually there just like Australia I almost forgot I had DRS because we actually made the pass beforehand with Rich Mix there and we're up into third place so how about that from seventh to third in three laps there not too shabby so it's Hamilton from Vettel myself Dan, then Dan Ricciardo then I believe it is Valtteri Bottas and Raikkonen. And it all kicked off, unfortunately, for, for Raikkonen. It all kicked off from his teammate locking up there. So it wasn't even really his fault. It's just the circumstance that into turn one, where all three of them were trying to make some kind of move work. And we're going to look at a replay now and see exactly that back from our off-board camera. So we already saw this angle on how it actually all started with that lockup. But we're going to stay on the off-board cameras now into turn one to try and get a better angle here. And Raikkonen down the inside. Vettel swoops back round, actually. And uh, just a tangle of front left tyres there. And then Ricardo just comes in. Raikkonen's obviously half spun, so he's going slowly. He's got no control of the car, and Ricardo just plows into the side of him, or the, the front right of his car, and a bit of carbon fibre breaks off. But it looks like Vettel, uh, you know, took a bit of a wide line, swooped quite aggressively back, and then just kind of almost misjudged it. A bit of a racing incident then, in my opinion, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Was that Vettel's fault? Should he have left more room for his teammate, perhaps? Because it did look like a bit of a swooping move to kind of pinch Raikkonen back into the apex. He just didn't realise Raikkonen was still there. And then you can see Raikkonen fends off Bottas quite well, actually, uh, in the next stint. But then you can see, as I made the move, then on Ricardo in the background, you can see Bottas was uh, overtaking Raikkonen very aggressively there. Raikkonen actually down the inside of Ricardo first, but then Bottas is trying his best to get in the mix. But uh, initially first, it's Ricardo who's being overtaken by Raikkonen, and Bottas is getting caught up in that little bit, getting boxed in. You can see Verstappen right up his chop, and then eventually around the outside in the last corner, Raikkonen makes the move. So actually quite a nice move there from the Iceman on the, uh, around the outside last corner. A very unconventional place to make a move around the outside uh, into, into that last corner of the Chinese Grand Prix around Shanghai. But he, now you can see there, uh, Ricardo struggling even more. Bottas round the outside of him into the first few turns and then Bottas got clean air to now chase after Raikkonen on this next lap and pretty much it's going to be a, a slam dunk I would think eventually to be overtaking that Ferrari car because the Mercedes did have the better pace overall over one lap I think Bottas just made a, a bad mistake in qualifying really you can see back behind 
and then as well, the Red Bulls just generally are struggling, even Verstappen. I don't know if Verstappen has an issue, but he's not too far ahead of that Renault of Hulkenberg, I would say. So uh, maybe ominous signs for the, for the rest of the race. We now cut back onto the live action here. I think finally it's going to be the move for the man in the silver arrows, Finn v Finn. Bottas on the inside, Raikkonen on the outside. Bad lock up from Raikkonen. And I think that's going to be a slam dunk. Yes, it is. And Raikkonen is down one more place. And meanwhile, Sof Van Dorn now fighting Nico Hulkenberg and sent it down the inside of Max Verstappen. Van Dorn with a brilliant little dive bomb there. Very cheeky. Tries to get Verstappen. Doesn't look like he'll make it happen. Or will he? Round the outside. Last corner. Surely not. He's going to try it. And I think he's pulling it off there. He's side by side still with Max. And he's got him. He's got Verstappen. What a beautiful move there from our teammate. And Verstappen now is being hounded by Hulkenberg as well. So not only Ricardo with some damage to his car. But Verstappen now is sideways. He's having a bit of a Jim Carner slide. And drift into turn one. And he's down three places. He's behind Roman Grosjean now as well. So it's not only Ricardo with issues. We know Ricardo has damage. But I don't know what on earth is wrong with Verstappen's car. I don't know. Maybe both Red Bull cars have a mechanical issue. That's just compounding and compounding their races right now. Uh, in terms of uh, going backwards. Uh, so yeah. We're going to have to keep up on that. And see by the end of the race where the Rebels are. But I think they're pretty much taken out of the running from the top flight of this race. As you can see here, we're in P3. We're now on lap number six here, this is. And Bottas is closing up to us. It's nearly time to start thinking about coming to the pit lane now. As we go rapidly down the gears into the brake zone, the hairpin, the back end starts to slide. And we've gone a little bit wide there and nearly off circuit completely as we get a track extend warning. And Bottas pulls off a switchback move. Very easy for him. And he's up into third. And that's pretty much the call for me to definitely come in there. I would have maybe continued on for one more lap because that was my schedule pit stop on lap seven. But uh, no, that kind of told me when the rear end just started to slide straight away because I don't think I broke too, uh, too, too late, really. I think the rear end just started to get away from me, fishtailing a little bit. And I uh, just couldn't get down the gears and down the speed uh, rapidly enough. So we're on to uh, a set of soft tyres now on this first pit stop. And we're going as long as we can to about, I would say, lap, uh, you'd be looking at lap 19, maybe ideally. You know, the, the super soft tyres on lighter fuel might be able to go 10 laps easy. So we're looking maybe around lap 18, lap 19, uh, if we can manage it on the soft tyres. Obviously, higher tyre wear this year on the 2018 mod compared to the base game. So obviously, it's going to be a bit trickier. And so that's why I'm curious to see if anyone tries to pull off a one stop it may still be possible but i feel like i'll have much better pace in this race on super softs then compared to anyone on medium tires we'll have to see much like bahrain basically but we get past then this is uh, uh Sorokin, the rushing in the williams very easily in the p60 in the moment kind of very lonely at the moment very far back but obviously everyone is going longer and longer on the super soft tires so that does actually make me wonder if most the grid may be is going to try a one-stop. We'll see. We're up to P14, so a few people are definitely already pinning a little bit earlier uh, than maybe the one-stop would say. I think the one-stop, you're looking around, maybe pinning around lap 10, lap 11, maybe, and then going to mediums, but we're uh, right now right up the back of Charles Leclerc and indeed both Sauber Alfa Romeo is here because Ericsson just right up the road. So uh, the first time we're kind of meeting Charles Leclerc in the 2018 mod series, obviously very familiar with him uh, in the My Driver universe. We're down the inside here in the 2018 mod and very easy overtake. McLaren v Sauber and it's an easy pass and we'll close up to Marcus Ericsson as well and as easy as that and obviously we have plenty of downfall so just about trying to make the move where we can not losing too much time can we make a move down the inside very easy does it lock up on the left tyre a little bit of contact made I think perhaps on the right hand side of the car there we're up into P12 then and we'll close up now to Brendan Hartley who has uh, just overtaken yet yeah, my eyes and your eyes aren't being deceived here Brendan Hartley in the, in the in the Toro Rosso Honda has just overtaken Max Verstappen in the more senior Red Bull car and uh, Verstappen with a double lock up there into hairpin so we make a very easy pass as well so very much uh, big big issues for Red Bull this afternoon and I think pretty much round number three is going to be a write off and one to forget for the entire Red Bull team is now we go on the outside there of Valtteri Bottas who comes out of the pits Bottas on super soft tyres so confirmation that at least Bottas here is on a two stop so surprise he's gone to lap 10 if he's doing a two stop maybe he's just looking to uh, to you know, try and just extend that stint to make his the rest of the stints easier. I don't, I don't, I don't know. He could have definitely come in a lot earlier and not lost the position to me. Because remember, Bottas was behind me uh, before the pit stop, albeit right before it. But you know, I basically effectively got an undercut back on him there. Uh, to re-overtake him but now we're trying to move around the outside very audacious move on the outside they're almost flat out and on the second phase Hartley tries to stick it around the outside and keep that move in but just doesn't have the downforce for it in the Toro car and so we're up into P7 there but uh 
yeah, so I don't really know exactly where we are, honestly, in this Grand Prix yet. Obviously, a few people let to come in, but um, it's a weird one to read in terms of the one-stop B, the two-stop, because it looks like Raikkonen's on medium, so he's doing a one-stop. Vettel on mediums, he's doing a one-stop. I don't know if Hamilton is. I would maybe think, I mean, in the past, in, in previous kind of uh, videos, we've seen the Mercedes guys do split strategy, so maybe Hamilton might be on mediums, but it's hard to call this one on where on earth we'll be, because it's the same thing like Bahrain, where I just need to be patient, really, and just try and do the best job I can, and we'll see how it goes. At the moment, though, I would say you can see Vettel getting held up quite a bit here by Carlos Sainz and the other Toro Rosso appear ghastly here. So, right now, it's not about being patient. It's maybe uh, about being a little bit eager here, because now we're up into Rich Mix, and I am sniffing maybe a little bit of a move to be made on the four-time world champion because at the moment he's being held up quite a bit by Dirty Air from that Renault and Toro Rosso. And down to the hairpin, the Toro Rosso Gasly moves to the inside to defend from Carlos Sainz. Sainz around the outside and you also got the Force India up ahead. So we've got uh, uh, three, four, five, six cars very close behind if you include Bottas as well. But he doesn't look like he's really too eager. But you can see uh, Sainz now down the inside. Gasly comes into the pit so maybe just at the perfect time here but you can see here look at this Vettel so so slow he's got DRS open but that won't matter he's had a horrible exit off the final corner so here we go down the inside of Sebastian Vettel and the Ferrari can we make it double pass as Sainz might be slow he's been on those tyres since the uh, to the start of the Grand Prix and we are down the inside we have made a fantastic double move there on the Spaniard and German in one foul swoop and so Vettel is past Sainz as well and Vettel actually very eager to now get on the back of me so it's not over there we might have to do some defending here here. We go to the inside to defend and break as late as we can, but Vettel is so good on the brakes. That Ferrari, obviously, at the moment, as it stands, is a lot better than this, and then this McLaren, obviously, even though we've had the upgrades from 2017 to 2018. Still not enough, maybe. And so, for now, we stay ahead of Vettel, but uh, I think it might be just inevitable that he's going to overtake us eventually. I would like to think we can put up a fight, because we're on soft tyres, but through this section he's going to be very good because the AI usually are very good off this left hand to bend and he, he, this is going to be no exception here he goes then right in the slipstream right and not too far in the background there on the back of that train that is a five man train being led by me Vettel down the inside of that next right hander he's got us but we will have DRS so we've played a bit of a wild old fox move there I've got the DRS because I just managed to slow down enough to be sure I'm the one behind Vettel at the detection point so here we go on the activation point we open up the rear flap We've got Rich Mix going, and can we try and re overtake him here? I should say actually standard, because we've uh, we burnt a lot of fuel now. So we're in Lee Mixture, because we need to try and save fuel, because we're almost about 0 0.5 minus on the fuel counter. Down to the hairpin, we've made that move, but Vettel's still got a nose in there. He's going to break a lot later into the final corner. Vettel squeezes us out there onto the curbing, and we've got a bit of oversteer, and so we now might be susceptible to Valtteri Bottas. There he goes on the inside, and Raikkonen is not too far away as well, but, but there with Valtteri, with DRS open, also for Raikkonen as well into turn one though Valtteri a little bit wide so we can maybe go back down his inside so we'll try and defend P3 if we can but Bottas got the nose in we lock up on the left front we have to give him the room or we got no kind of choice because I was going off camber anyway off off the racing line and so Bottas just says thank you very much and he's up into P3 and pretty much that is going to be I think the end of my fighting with those two it's inevitable that they might overtake me really you've got to say in the McLaren versus the, the Mercedes and the Ferrari and you can see quite clearly in the bottom right still trying to save fuel because as I said we are pretty much halfway in the negative here so we really need to get on saving fuel because with the mod it's a lot easier to burn fuel than it is to save fuel like you can burn through about an entire 1.00 of fuel like you know in a couple of laps whereas you've got to save fuel for about 10 laps to get that back so it's uh, it's quite skewed to, to the rich mix uh, obviously as it would be really in real life as well it's a lot harder to save fuel than it is to, to, to kind of burn it and kind of a lot easier to burn it so you have to watch out for that meanwhile though uh, back behind is some fighting going on here you've got the Toro Rosso up here Gasly down the inside of the Force India to get up into what I think is around P8 I want to say I think this is a, a scrap between P8, P9 and P10 and so the Toro Rosso of Gasly doing really really well I mean as I mentioned already they did well in qualifying but I didn't imagine they'd be this good on race pace there fighting a Force India and a Renault and the two Renault boys once again not really there on race pace you know they've had a really unfortunate start to the season obviously they've had a lack of luck you know both of them have uh, had quite unlucky races in the first two rounds but they just haven't pulled it together 
for some major points. But like I mentioned, the start uh, at the end of the Bahrain Grand Prix episode, the, the whole midfield fight, which we're, we're, which we're part of, uh, is, is so, so tight that it's, it's, it's difficult to, you know, to make any differences, really. And now you can see I'm being attacked now by Kimi Räikkönen. He's on my inside here. But again, unlike, uh, unlike the one with Vettel, unlike the fight with Vettel, we've uh, gone a little bit earlier under breaking in the last corner. And now we've uh, effectively got a better, uh, better line. We've straightened up the car a lot faster. And so into turn one of lap 18, we're up down the inside and we're back up into third place there. And so lap 18, like I said, this is pretty much where the lap I would come in. You can see in the bottom right, the indicator is green on the pit box there. So I think give it probably till the end of this lap and we'll be in for our second pit stop onto a set of super soft tyres. But let's just make sure that we stay ahead for now of Raikkonen into the next sector. Yes, we do. And so we're going to move on, not to the actual end of this lap, but the next lap, lap 19. So we stretch that one more. So we're going nine laps now on super soft tyres. So that should be quite comfortable indeed to get to the end of this race and uh, we're just about maybe getting back under fuel in terms of that being all okay for the end of the race so we're looking good I don't think uh, quite as comfortable as we were back at the Bahrain Grand Prix but still pretty good enough but we're gonna have to see where we actually come out this is the kind of moment to see where all the one stoppers are I know my teammate Van Dorn was actually trying a one stop so he might be ahead of us by quite some way because he wasn't too far off myself and Kimmy there and as we come out the pit lane now you can see two cars three cars have gone past it's going to be Brennan Hartley there, familiar with him from earlier on the race. We skate across, you can see the coal tyres not doing me too much there into turn one. And ahead of us is Sainz, Ocon and Gasly in the distance there. And we're down to P9. So we're going to make three overtakes then to get up into uh, what will at least be P6. And it's super soft V medium tyres, of course. And remember, medium tyres that have been on, on these cars for quite a while. So we should have the grip to overtake these guys quite quickly, hopefully not losing too much time whilst we do that. As we close up now on Carlos Sainz, flat out through that left hand. Uh, very, very close. And that is time we are losing so speak about that I probably just jinxed it there you can clearly see the amount of grip I have compared to science just meant I closed up so rapidly in the switch from the, the from the left to the right as you shimmy and shake in the S section there and so nearly caught off guard and had to do a bit of evasive action getting out of the throttle and uh, twitching to the left to, to not rear end Carlos Sainz and so now we're after, having to be patient and wait till the back straight Sainz might try and move on knock on here so we might be able to make a double overtake if we're lucky into the hairpin maybe with DRS wide open here and so there goes Sainz now trying to make a move he fakes a little bit to the left and right and we're gaining and gaining as we go towards the hairpin Sainz unable to make a pass there lock up though from Ocon and here we go down the inside of both the cars little bit of a nose peek on Ocon who couldn't fully get side by side with the Frenchman there but we are down the, down the inside of our fellow countryman Carlos Sainz and then into the last corner nice and tight on the apex there Ocon flustered a little bit clearly into the hairpin open up DRS onto that 21 seven laps to go need to make this pass and then we'll get on to Pierre Gasly fake to left move to the right in Ocon first in the first break zone he's able to stay ahead but then in the second phase of the long right hander able to get it down the inside he does not have the downforce he does not have the grip and we're up into P7 and now we'll try and chase after Pierre Gasly a man we are all too familiar with from previous series on this channel a la my driver meanwhile though we've got uh, Lewis Hamilton now in second place making a move for the lead of the Grand Prix Vettel on a one stop Hamilton on a two and there it is a very easy pass with DRS wide open I think pretty inevitable that Hamilton would have had the pace to re-overtake Vettel for the race lead there Vettel pretty defenseless and uh, pretty much just has to take it and sit there and go down to second place and I believe Bottas had to do the same thing. Bottas uh, has actually tried to had to overtake uh, not only Van Dorn but also Raikkonen because I think uh, when he came out of the pit lane, he was behind both those cars. But Bottas will eventually get up into P3 at the end of this Grand Prix. Then uh, obviously the two Mercedes cars flexing their muscles on the two stop. Meanwhile, I'm trying to do the same here around the outside of Pierre. Then very, very close and a deja vu uh, move made because we made uh, pretty much the exact same move on his teammate Brendan Harley earlier on in the Grand Prix but unfortunately now for me I just do not have the pace now to actually catch up to Van Dorn I mean obviously I have more pace than him uh, at this phase of the Grand Prix but it's not enough to close up the gap because Van Dorn actually had a 20 second gap on me that's how good of a job he did on the one stop so 
although the two stop for me was faster than all my main competition it was not fast enough against my teammate because obviously really realistically we're talking about it my my main competition is not ferrari and mercedes right now it's all these guys and so clearly i was faster than these uh, these folk as carlos Sainz has overtaken ocon now to get that position up into what will be uh, p8 but uh, it was not fast enough to beat my teammate today so fair play who knows if maybe we're on a one stop we maybe could have held up the uh, ferrari car of raikkonen or maybe bottas but that would have been very tricky because you saw earlier when i tried to hold up vettel and bottas it just didn't work out on warm tires so you know it's it's all about you know in hindsight you can say a lot of stuff so i thought that was the correct strategy for me i committed to it and obviously it just hasn't worked out there because i don't think i'll be catching vandal but you never know let's wait because we still have plenty of action to go you can see here roman grosjean down the inside of both Toro Rosso cars to get up into what I believe is the tail end of the points there and so Gasly's down the order, Hartley's now being overtaken here by the other Renault of Nico Hulkenberg swooping around the outside and then the, the Red Bull car we haven't seen too much of them uh, this entire race pretty much since the first stint there but Carlos Sainz still doing a good job at the moment in P8 until oh no, ah, bad bad luck for Carlos Sainz from P8 engine failure there, Ocon is going to be gifted P8 and so that's Carlos Sainz's race over and once again the Renault boys are struck with a lot of bad luck and um, like I said earlier they just they just haven't had that rub of the green. No, we've had it plenty of time already. The Haas have had it a little bit in the opening two rounds. Renault, just not really that much. And again, forcing to get lucky with Ocon fin finishing P7. But here we go across the line then. And we do finish up in uh, what is going to be P6. Actually, my bad. Then uh, move everyone up one position. I was actually miscalculating where we were. P6 then, Van Dorn and P5. But uh, it's Lewis Hamilton to finally, you know, three out of three pole positions. And I said in the grid, uh, grid sequence, you know, could it be third time lucky? And yes, it is. Hamilton finally wins a Grand Prix in 2018 ahead of Sebastian Vettel and Valtteri Bottas there. But uh, what could it be? Maybe maximum P5. You never know. But, uh, you know, all in all, a very good Grand Prix for us because we've beaten both uh, Red Bull cars who had a misery of a race today. We beat, we, you know, beat both Haas, beat both Renaults, uh, the, the 14 that got lucky there. And so all in all, good haul of points for the McLaren team. And obviously, we already beat Van Dorn twice this season, so I'm not too frustrated by him beating us again. It's healthy to obviously have him up there as well and so good to see he's pulling his weight there but ultimately for the championship that's good to see that Hamilton's bounced back because it's going to be uber close I believe Vettel should probably still be in the lead as I mentioned Ocon was the real big lucky one actually in P7 you know so far Force India have got quite a few points which I really didn't think they'd be getting but you know I think the biggest biggest play actually if we look at it is Brendan Hartley there in P9 in the Torosa Honda obviously Gasly did some great work at the start of that Grand Prix but he fell away Hartley though finishes p9 fantastic job there for the for the for the guys with the honda power to get some points on the board so, so early on but vettel still leads the driver's championship then by only a couple of points though to valtteri bottas and hamilton now he's still quite some ways away from those top two but he is finally on the table and right up there where he probably deserves to be in p3 there we're still great and we're actually ahead of both red bull cars so that's fantastic and in the constructors we have now jumped red bull racing for third place there so a fantastic set of results in the first three rounds. Obviously, I would not expect this to remain like that. I expect Red Bull to bounce back, but obviously around Barcelona, upgrades will be coming in. You never know what can happen there. Uh, Haas, Force India, Renault look to be locked in in a fight. See, I expect Force India to fall away a bit as uh, Renault really haven't had the, uh, the rub of the green, as I said. But guys, that's been another fantastic Grand Prix for the team and myself personally as well. So guys, if you did enjoy it, smash that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I've been I hope you enjoyed the rest of the day, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.